The last quote. Now this is interesting. This is a letter. Srila Prabhupada wrote this letter in November 1968. Who did he write this letter to? He wrote this letter to Hayagriva. Hayagriva, his, his disciple, who was initiated in 1966 in New York on 2nd Avenue. He left this world. But uh, he wrote some nice books and did a lot of... He, did, he was Prabhupada's editor. He was a professor of English from Ohio State University. And uh, Howard Wheeler. Howard Wheeler became Hayagriva. So he wrote a letter to Prabhupada, obviously complaining that, that I'm not doing so well, I'm being disturbed by sex, ag- um, sex agitation, and uh, you know the Ramacharinis in the temple are catching my fancy, they're catching my eye, and these Prabhu genies or whatever they call them, Prabhu, Prabhus, Prabhus and Prabhu genies, <laughs> bhaktas and bhaktins and bhaktins or whatever, you know, teenage bhaktas or whatever, <laughs> bhakta and bhaktin, all these kind of interesting, like this kind of even creates new words that don't exist, but uh, some somehow. <laughs> I'm attracted and I'm really in bad shape. So what did Prabhupada write to him? Now, 1968, Prabhupada is not known as Prabhupada. He's called Swamiji. 1968. So the most advanced devotee in the movement was two years in the movement, right? Mm-hmm. Now, was he, was he on the level of Nartanivrti? Was he on the level of Ruchi? Well, obviously he wasn't on Nartanivrti because he writes a letter, Prabhupada, I'm agitated. My sex life, I don't know what to do. So Prabhupada writes back, Listen, another secret. Another secret of success is... When one is very seriously, no, excuse me, when one is very, very sexually agitated, he should think of Krishna's pastimes with the gopis. And he will forget his sex urge. To think of Krishna's pastimes with the gopis, but not to imitate them. That was his... That was Prabhupada's solution to his. That was his response or reply to the letter that Hayagriva wrote. So this is, this is the doozy. This is the, last doozy. the final quote that Srila Prabhupada is saying in so many purports and many many others. I've only cited a few, and Vishnath and Jiva that this is the medicine. Of the bhava rog. Bhava rog means the disease of material existence. Bhava rog, and this is oshadi. This is medicine. To hear about Krishna's pastimes with faith, we believe it and believe in Shukadeva Goswami and read over and over again Ras Lila and other pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Don't imitate them and don't hear them. Hearing them, we read Krishna books, so we're hearing from Srila Prabhupada. He's not a rascal Mayavadi. As he says, don't hear from rascal Mayavadis. He's a Paramahamsa. He's a Nityasiddha Mandri of Radharani. So we can hear, we should hear over and over again. Krishna book. Prabhupada told us to read it every night. Read Krishna book every night. So this is uh, what we wanted to present here today. So I thought since we've been uh, talking about hearing the Rasa dance, we might as well read about it. <laughs> right? So <laughs> this is a kind of a summary of the Rasa dance. This is taken from um, Govinda Lilamrita and Bhagavatam and in other places. It's in a book called Appreciating Sri Vrindavan Dham. And then, uh, is everyone listening? The Rasa dance is described here so that devotees will deepen their understanding and attraction to Radha and Krishna's eternal pastimes. Devotees will also derive tremendous spiritual benefits by regularly reading and discussing. Regularly, that means daily. Anushinayat means hearing. Anushina, hearing over and over and repeatedly. Regularly reading and discussing this most sublime transcendental pastime of Krishna. One wears a peacock feather crown and the other has wonderfully beautiful braids. One has a chest wonderfully anointed with sandalwood paste and the other wears a splendid botus. One wears colorfully jeweled yellow garments, bejeweled means like embroidered, that reach down almost to the ankle, and the other wears beautiful and colorful jeweled garments of red. This is in daytime. In this way, the fair and dark young couple are wonderfully charming and handsome. Radha and Krishna smile with love for each other. Their wonderful splendor pervades all directions. With the tinkling sounds of their ankle bells and belt, and the music of the jeweled flute, they enchant the moving 
and non-moving spiritual creatures of the Vrindavan forest. Radha and Krishna enter the beautiful jeweled arena, which is covered with flowers and filled with the gopis singing and the rhythm of Murdangas. Radha and Krishna dance and clap their hands with wonderful gracefulness, and the graceful motions of their limbs and eyes create a great festival of nectarine mellows, of transcendental amorous love. This divine couple is my life and soul. Among the saintly devotees, who will not worship the divine couple, Radhika Krishna Chandra? One by one, oh, excuse me, after seeing Vrindavan, Sri Radha, the full moon lit night, the Yamuna and her banks, Krishna desired to enact the Rasalila. Vrindavan pleases all of Krishna's senses. She satisfies Shama Sundar, Sundar's ears with her singing birds and bees. Vrindavan pleases Krishna's skin with her cool breezes, Krishna's tongue with her sweet ripened fruits, Krishna's eyes with her moonbeams, and Krishna's nose with the fragrance of nicely blooming flowers. One by one, Krishna began to enjoy all the different items of the Rasa festival with his beloved gopis. They played in the forest, danced in a group, danced individually or with Krishna in the center, or both Radha and Krishna in the center, encircled by whirling gopis. Sri Krishna took all the gopis to the sandy Yamuna bank named Anangolasa, Anangolasa Ranga, the arena of blissful exotic sports, I should say erotic sports, which was cleansed by the Yamuna's soft, wave-like hands, scented with lilies and illuminated by soothing nectarine and a romantic moon rays. Now here are the description of the moon rays. The moon rays are soothing, they're full of nectar, and they're romantic. Holding hands, the gopis formed a circle around Radha and Krishna. The Rasa circle looked like a golden disk of rotating ladies being spun around by Sri Krishna, who was directed to make pots for the potter king Cupid on the potter disc of the Ras Mandal. This is an imagery. The gopis held each other's hands, and Krishna kept his arms on their shoulders as they blissfully wandered around performing different dances. The whole universe resounded with the sweetness of Krishna's flute, the voices of the gopis, and the sound of their bangles, waist bells and ankle bells jingling in rhythm with their dancing feet. Krishna and the gopis joyfully sang many varieties of t- uh, different tunes. Although imperceivable to mere mortals, they, s- they sang the celebrated celestial Gandharva scale, 